So welcome everybody. Um, I'm sure some more people will be joining us. Today's uh, Lunch and Learn topic is ICS with ICS. And what it stands for is Integrate, Connect, Socialize with Information Computer Sciences. So how do we connect and engage with ICS and the various departments and offices as well as cross-functionally across UCI? Um, and how we can integrate, connect, socialize, mentor, uh, learn and you know some people can even teach um, alumni who have been in the uh, who have graduated and are subject matter experts. So um, we will have Dean Marios and uh, various members of UCI present. Uh, we have a new website icsanteaters.org and that has links to all our social media and emails so please check that out. Uh, mark your calendars for other events that we will have. We have our first Friday's Lunch and Learn, so December will be about Android. And we also plan to have some fun social events, such as an ugly sweater contest, a Jackbox game night, and um, some other fun events like that. Uh, I, uh, along with my family, will be doing a Wellness Wednesday, November 18th at 7, um, which will be also posted on, on our social media. So before we hand it over to Dean Marios, I just wanted to post a few pictures from our Halloween event. So I wanted to thank everybody for submitting. We had some very creative inputs and we hope to grow this and have this as an annual event. So uh, Lily, our board member was a data miner. Um, my sister was social butterfly. We had astronaut. Our favorite was Anne, who was a media server and <laughs> Um, she also brought in old media like floppy disks and stuff. So that was super fun and creative. And she was serving it to Peter the Anteater. So super duper creative. Um, Jen, our board member, who's not able to join us because it's her 40th birthday today, um, her and her family dressed up as Wreck-It Ralph, breaks the internet. So super cute to involve the kids. Again, we want this to apply to not only alumni, but the next generation and create a legacy. And I pulled up an old archive. Uh, Jen and I used to work at Canon as interns while we were at UCI. And so we dressed up as software bug and QA tester about 20 years ago. So really had to dig deep to find that physical picture since it's not digitized. And if anybody remembers, we used rational IBM um, clear case and clear quest. So that's how we were bug trackers. Um, I'll just do a quick introduction. I believe Jamar, our vice president, is on. If you want to just say hi really quick, Jamar. Hello, hello. Um, Jen's not here because of her birthday. Uh, Lily, are you on? Hey, everybody. Hi, Lily. Uh, she was data miners, got her whole family dressing up, so that was pretty cute. <laughs> uh, J VJ, are you on? Do you want to say hi really quick? You may not be in Carrie. Okay, they may not, they may join later. So today's agenda, I'll just be the moderator. I'll help guide everyone through the uh, different speakers. So first and foremost, we'll have uh, Dean Marios. He'll give a current overview of ICS. And then we have Carolyn who will discuss ICS and the advancement office and what they do. Jason King will talk about corporate relations and the capstone and the capstone directly ties into also the ICS professionals master's program. So we'll have Jessica discuss that. And then along with that, we will have Julie who will be from uh, DCE, which is a continuing education. Um, so if the professional masters may not be for you, there's um, other certificate programs. And Jeff Minhas will talk about alumni offerings and AntNet, which is um, a new rollout. So I think that's very applicable. And Dakota will talk about career pathways. And uh, if you have Q&A, please uh, put it in the chat box and we will address it accordingly. So without further ado, Dean Mario. Good, uh, thank you so much. Uh, and thanks, thanks to everyone for, for joining this lunch. Uh, I'm the first speaker, but I'm, I'm the least really. Uh, I, there's a very long list of uh, folks, uh, uh, more important folks who are gonna be talking later on. So I want to keep my part uh, uh, short and to the point. I want to give you the quick uh, update on where ICS stands. Hopefully I'm not gonna take more than five minutes and give everyone enough time to, uh, to present. So on the next slide, you're gonna see 
uh, I know this is a virtual event uh, today, but we've been virtual for some time now, including the commencement event, uh, which took place last uh, June. Uh, this uh, would have been our second ICS only commencement. Uh, we're graduating a record, record number of students. We had this past June 1,200 students graduating. This is undergraduate and graduate. To put this number in perspective, this is approximately two, maybe two and a half percent of the annual number of computing degrees uh, that are coming out of uh, the US and Canada. This is PhDs and bachelor's and master's degrees. So it's a very large program, one of the largest in the country. On the next slide, you're gonna see some data uh, that suggests that this is one of the best programs in the country as well. So this is fall 2020 data. We had approximately 11,000 uh, applicants, uh, undergraduates. Uh, we enrolled 630 new undergraduates into our program and that represents a selectivity of 20%, uh, slightly below 20% actually. On the graduate front, we had almost 6,000 applicants. We enrolled 310 new graduate students despite the pandemic and despite all the issues that we're managing. And selectivity on the graduate front was about 15%. And there is a range there. It goes as low as 5% in some programs. It goes as high as 20% in some others. You can see some stats about our um, SATs and GPAs from 2019 and numbers are just one of the many, many uh, elements that we look into when we look at our students. But I can, I can guarantee you we have some of the best students uh, uh, across the nation at this point. On the next slide, you will see uh, an overview of our degree, degree programs. Uh, you're all alums, so you probably remember most, if not all of these programs. Uh, but some of them are new, uh, certainly are professional uh, master's programs that uh, got off the ground uh, three years ago are really new. You can see the listing of all the professional master's programs. The most uh, recent one, the one that we're kicking off in fall of 2021 is uh, in data science. And today you're gonna hear overview, an overview of the professional programs from, uh, from Jessica and, uh, and uh, and uh, Jacqueline. Um, on the next slide, you see some of the trends in our undergraduate enrollments. We are at approximately 3,500, 3,600 undergraduates. Again, to put numbers in perspective, uh, about one in every eight undergraduates at UCI at this moment is an ICS undergraduate. So that's a fairly high percentage. Uh, approximately one third of our undergraduates are first generation, so we have a st strong commitment to uh, diversity and inclusion. About one in four is female, about one in seven is a URM. On the next slide, you see the trends on the graduate enrollment. Uh, we're approximately 800 graduate students as of fall of 2020. Uh, the school has been growing for the past three, four years on the graduate front as well. Uh, most of the additions are through the professional master's programs. Uh, the red line that you see shooting up starting at around fall 16, fall 17. But we also have a steady increase in the number of PhD students. We have about 330 PhD students as of fall of 2020. Uh, one of the reasons that we have more PhD students is that we have more and more faculty. So on the next slide, you're gonna see all the faculty hires that we did in the past three and a half years. Uh, I'm using the same slide year after year. And, uh, oh wait, that's the next next, but that's fine. On this slide, you see the graph that shows you how many faculty we have in the school. Uh, this is the number of tenure track faculty. I don't include the lecturers, I don't include the research scientists and all the other uh, research staff. So, we have grown the school by approximately 50% in the past three to four years in terms of tenure track faculty. These are all the faces of the new hires for the past three to four years. I'm using the same slide and I'm running out of space. As you can tell, I'm putting new faculty out on the fringes. And despite all the challenges of the pandemic, we are hiring again this year. We have four new positions uh, that we are uh, looking to fill in academic year 2021. On the next slide, you'll see all the research areas. 
In the school, again, you are alum, so you're probably familiar with many of these areas, but just a refresher, we have a very strong team in the AI, machine learning, data science space with more than 100 PhD students and more than 15 core faculty, large groups in databases, cybersecurity, software engineering, embedded systems, which is broadly defined to include architecture, internet of things, uh, design automation, network systems, graphics and visualization, which includes virtual reality and augmented reality, uh, human computer interaction, a very strong group in that space, and then a very strong group in digital media and learning, which is an emerging area of research in our school. Uh, we are doing approximately $20 million of uh, research uh, in terms of new grants, research expenditures uh, every year. And this is all externally funded. There is also a significant component of internal funds that we invest in research. The 20 million is all from the federal government, industry, foundations, and outside, outside UCI. Couple of highlights from the past year, and I'm almost done. Uh, I'm very excited about the new HPI uh, Center on Machine Learning and Data Science that started in February of 2020. HPI is the Hasso Plattner Institute. It's a technology institute uh, based in Germany. It's a private public um, uh, partnership uh, with the public uh, part uh, coming from uh, the German government and the private part coming from the Hasso Plattner Foundation. So HPI set up a center in our school to support 15 PhD students, uh, fully support 15 PhD students and the focus of the research that these students are doing in partnership with uh, colleagues in the Hasso Plattner Institute in Germany is focused on machine learning and data science, the human-centered aspects of machine learning and data science. So it's not about the technology, it's about how we put the technology to good use. Another very exciting development is the new building uh, interdisciplinary science and engineering, engineering building, which is basically complete. You can probably see, well, you cannot really see it behind my window, but it's basically right across from Bren Hall, uh, 200,000 square feet mixed space. The assignable square footage is 120,000. It's a huge building and it will be housing engineering, physical sciences and ICS faculty and researchers who focus in the broad space of what I would call e-science. How do you put information technology and computing to work with um, engineering and, and science? Uh, for problems, the focus will be on problems related to the environment and uh, health and wellness. On the next slide, another event that I am very excited about. This is the industry showcase that we organize every October now. This, is, this has become a regular event. It was the second industry showcase that we managed to uh, put together in a virtual format this year. What you, what you see on the right-hand side is from 2019. We didn't have uh, recruiters and students on campus for this event this year. We nevertheless had uh, hundreds of students uh, participating. We had uh, about 20 of our corporate partners participating. Uh, the logos that you see on the left-hand side is all the corporate partners we have in ICS as of, as of this fall. So very excited. Uh, obviously there is huge demand for our students you know that firsthand, you are our alums. And nevertheless, we're doing our best to connect our students with uh, recruiters in industry. Uh, despite the pandemic, demand is strong. Recruiting is a bit challenging. You know, Zoom interviews and all that is not really the best way to assess folks. But still, it is happening. And we were very, very uh, happy with uh, how this event turned out. So I'm basically done. Uh, I want to thank uh, everyone for participating today. On the next slide, I have a big thank you. Uh, thank you to our, our alumni chapter. I'm really, really, uh, I cannot describe in words how happy I am that you guys are taking the lead on this and collecting, connecting our alums. Uh, and I want to encourage everyone to stay connected. You're going to see a lot of information today. Uh, this is all recorded, so you can always go back and see the recording. Uh, but even more important, uh, you can talk to us. Uh, you know where we live, you know our emails, you can pick up the phones. Uh, everyone knows Kristin. Kristin has been running our alumni connection relations in ICS for a lot of years. And of course, our alumni association has been uh, very, very supportive of our, our alums and I'm deeply appreciative. So uh, a big thank you to everyone. I'm happy to take any questions if there is any time. I used more than 10 minutes. I yeah, should be I really think the podium. Kick me out, Pudza, please feel free to yes, kick me out. Yes, there's just a quick question. Um, 
what are the trends in females enrolling and ethnic diversification? Um, yes, yes. Uh, what the trend is? We have about one in four female students and we have about one in seven uh, ULM students. Uh, in terms of percentage, the numbers are flat. In terms of absolute numbers, they have been going up because the size of the program has been going up. But percentage wise, we have remained at those numbers, percentages for some time now. Uh, one of the things we are looking into, uh, and I will be announcing a committee in the next uh, uh, week, is retention among our URM students. We have a lot of URM students who are coming in. We're not doing the best job retaining them. So my hope is that by taking a closer look at retention, we're, we're gonna get our URM numbers higher. For those not familiar, can you say what URM is? Underrepresented minorities. And there is a federal government definition of URMs. So I'm happy to give that. You know, it's uh, uh, African-Americans, uh, uh, Hispanics. So there is a list. Uh, right. Perfect. Thank you for yeah. that scenario. So yeah. Thank you, now we will go to the ICS Advancement Office. Um, well, you're all familiar with Kristen, but Carolyn Canning-White will be doing the presentation. So Carolyn, go ahead. Thanks everybody for joining us today and I'll try to be very quick as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so the ICS Advancement Office is, uh, as you as said, you know Kristen and Jason King who will pr present later and Emily Sumpt who I think is on, on, uh, on the sidelines here watching, but important part of our team. So that's our team of four. So very quickly, our mission is to engage alumni and supporters to further the priorities of the school working with the Dean in partnership with the faculty and staff. We partner with everybody across the school. Uh, we work with all the different uh, academic departments. We have certainly faculty that uh, are a little bit more active with us, uh, but pretty much we try to cover the entire school as much as we can. There's so much happening. It, uh, there's never a dull moment. So our primary areas where we focus um, as I, as I put here, I hate to read everything to you where you, when you all can read, uh, the research support, a real focus on student experience, uh, program support and events. And I'll let Kristen talk about those in just one minute, capital projects. Kristen, do you wanna say a little bit about Hall of Fame and some of the events you work on? Um, great, uh, yeah, thank you. So we'll be opening up our Hall of Fame nominations next Thursday, the 12th. So um, be on the lookout for that. And um, we're very excited to um, uh, bring in our new cohort. Next year will look a little different um, being that, you know, uh, we're online right now, um, but we hope to have some special plans to recognize our alumni um, that will be in our six year, I think it is, of the program. So um, so be on the lookout for that for next year. If you have anybody in mind, um, again, you can always shoot me an email um, and let me know, um, but we're really excited um, to uh, keep um, moving forward with the Hall of Fame for this upcoming year. Um, as well, uh, the Bill and Butterworth competitions this past year, um, they uh, in 2020 were postponed due to COVID. Um, and trying to navigate that. So we're really excited about um, hopefully launching um, early uh, 2021 in the winter. Um, and um, as well, all the other events that we usually do, um, uh, our alumni events and that kind of thing, we're doing the Lunch and Learns now. So we're so thankful for the, the chapter um, for putting this all together for us. But um, in the future, when we're allowed to, when there's, a, you know, when everything's settled down, we um, will look forward to seeing you all in person. So, um, and then a thank you to Pooja, Jamar, Lily, VJ, and, and Carrie also for, you know, again, making these uh, wonderful lunch and learns happen. So that's all. Okay, so the next slide, I can go through pretty quickly too. I think we have one more. So this is how, this is how we, we work for advancement. Through alumni volunteer engagement, uh, we have a Dean's Leadership Council meeting uh, coming up in a couple of weeks, and these are uh, the high-level group of um, supporters and donors who are uh, interested in helping us forward some of the priorities of the school. If you're interested in 
being part of that, certainly contact us and we'll let you know. Uh, we'll send you the job descriptions and what the um, the process is for becoming part of the Dean's Leadership Council. Individual giving, uh, we all focus on um, Giving Day. Your chapter did such a great job last year. Thank you so much. Um, I haven't heard what next year's Giving Day is going to be, but I'm sure that will be coming out shortly. And then corporate support, which you'll hear a whole lot more about from Jason, um, particularly on the capstone projects. Are there any questions? I don't see any in the chat. Okay. Again, thank you all. Perfect. Thank you, Carolyn. So Jason will now talk about capstone projects and corporate relations. Jason, go ahead. Thank you, Pooja. Uh, so uh, as a whole, regarding the capstone uh, programs and the projects themselves, uh, maybe just a brief description of what they are. The, the capstone programs are designed to essentially give students hands-on projects or experience that they can work with within a 10 week, one quarter or 20 week, two quarter time frame. Uh, some people compare them to internships. They're similar to internships, but they're also different in the sense that it's specifically a class that the students are working on or for, for class credit, or maybe even some departments it's required before they graduate. Um, they're, very, they're very good in the sense that they help to build out students' soft skills, uh, project, manage, project management skills, and even just team collaborative skills while working with a internal project sponsor or an external industry project sponsor. Um, and the next slide, if you wanna to go to that. So in regards to uh, the capstone programs, we have capstone programs. Um, the next slide will will we'll, uh, touch base on it, but just really briefly, um, we have capstone programs at the undergraduate and graduate level. Because we're on the quarter system, uh, they start in the fall, uh, roughly in the beginning of October. And then there's uh, ones that will go for 20 weeks, two quarters, and then ones that will start for 10 and end December. But the nice thing is um, I've been able to benchmark and see how we compare it against uh, other universities or even uh, other uh, schools similar to us being computer science. And we by far do more capstone programs than most. We, do, we average around roughly 120 capstone projects a year over uh, six different capstone programs. And the nice thing about it is if there are any um, alumni or industry partners that are interested in partnering with ICS to uh, essentially sponsor or provide a project, we are always looking for opportunities to partner and essentially give our students hands-on working experience. Um, if there's any questions that you have or any interest, um, you can feel free to reach out to me. My email, I believe, is on uh, one of the next slides. In addition to that, you can reach out to Pooja or one of your um, alumni board members. But I'm a firm believer in giving students the hands-on uh, project experience to fine-tune their skill set or uh, collaborative team working environments before they graduate, just so they put a better step forward. And capstone programs do a really good job of that in general. Uh, next slide. So th this screen's a little hard to, to read, but everything in blue, um, actually, as a quick heads up, this document is really just a, a overview of all the different capstone programs that we have. Um, and this is specifically for the School of ICS. So anything in blue is uh, gonna be undergraduate focus, whereas anything in beige to the right will be grad more graduate focus. And when I say graduate, it's mainly just master's level um, uh, programs. So uh, at the very top, you'll see programs from data science, informatics, informatics and software engineering. Uh, we have a new computer science program that launched a year ago, so that's fairly recent. In addition to the professional master's programs, and I, I won't take too much time on this because um, I believe Jessica is speaking about them next, but our professional master's programs uh, typically run between 12 to 15 months. And it's, I believe, encouraged, if not required, that the students work on a capstone project and most of them are gonna be internal projects. But the, the point is still the same where um, they get the hands-on experience working on a specific project or, or item uh, to fruition within a, a set time frame. And then um, before I forget, we are uh, privileged to have Professor Hadar Ziv on the line. He is one of the main stakeholders for uh, capstone programs within ICS. He's also what I refer to as the capstone director for informatics. 
and he has been doing these programs for over 10 years. And I'd like for him to uh, take maybe a couple minutes to share specifically about informatics and some of the great work that's going on within his programs. Yeah, thank you, Jason, for the introduction. Uh, can I get that on LinkedIn, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, hello again, everyone. I, I have been a teacher for Capstone Projects for a long time. Um, used to be the only one. Now, now with the uh, with the growth that both Marius and Jason have described, there are many, many capstone and project options, and uh, many, many teachers who are <clears throat> teaching the different ones. So my focus has remained primarily with informatics, um, even though I occasionally teach uh, some of the uh, professional masters capstone as well. One of the things I wanted to mention is, and it sort of addresses one of the questions that came up in the chat, is we really like to take projects from many, many sources, from many corporate sizes, of all sizes, and also from many, many non-corporate sources. Uh, we love to get projects from alums and from previous members of the UCI community, and we do all the time. Uh, we take projects from different parts of um, campus, many, many medical school projects over the years, and even UCI bookstore, UCI computer store, uh, other schools, all of that is in, in our repertoire. And we especially, especially like to support um, uh, nonprofit and charitable organizations. Over the years, we've had many projects, multiple projects from uh, the Down Syndrome Foundation of Orange County, uh, many other children related projects, for example, from groups like A Million Kids, Team Kids. We have a summer camp in Irvine that's had multiple projects with us. Um, lots of startups and entrepreneurial efforts. And um, at this point, after all this time, uh, going back to the question about the uh, what are, uh, how do we get projects, especially if we're low? Um, First of all, we have Jason and others who are on the call doing great work for us in um, solicitation and recruitment of projects. We have a lot of word of mouth going on right now, especially after so many years. And we had we have many, many, many repeat, um, um, let's call it sponsors or partners uh, that uh, keep coming back to work with us. In the last few years, we make an effort every year to have at least one, um, you know, web article or marketing piece about uh, someone who's worked with us. So if you go through the um, ICS or UCI web archives, um, you'll find an interview with um, a company called SendGrid that has since been bought by Twilio and many other interesting stories. One of the th stories we really like to tell is when our students get hired pretty much directly out of these capstone projects. And that happens both at the undergraduate and graduate level. Um, SendGrid hired one person directly from the team that they had. Uh, we had a, com a company called Biorad um, a year ago that hired, I think, three out of the six people on the team. So, so it's getting really good. And, uh, and, uh, and really big. And one of the things that's getting big is the sheer size of the projects. So just in informatics alone, we have three sessions per year of the capstone project, meaning the 20 week version. And that accommodates more than 200 students per calendar year. And then we, ha <clears throat> we have other projects for, for undergraduates in the CS major and other majors that I think almost doubles the number of students that go through the program. So that's, that's just at the undergraduate level. And then um, as was mentioned, you will hear uh, very soon from others about the graduate level capstone. So that's what I wanted to say. Um, and I'll give it back to Jason King. Thank you. So we have a couple of questions. Um, I think they were briefly answered and we can come back to them at the end. Um, basically, if you want to see some of the examples of Capstone, there are links um, posted in this slide deck, which will be available after. So we can see the videos. Um, Jason, is there anything else you wanna add about what 
what I guess the projects are called or what the outputs were? were of sure. The so by definition of a capstone project, it's open-ended, meaning there's no guarantee for a specific um, outcome at the end of a 10-week or 20-week time frame. Uh, and that's similar to, I think, an internship in the sense that, you know, the students are getting the experience and maybe the the, the work with what they're working on to, uh, you know, improve their uh, their knowledge and their their education also put it to use. But also um, really the, the difference between a 10 versus a, a 20 week project is the, the amount of work that students can do. Meaning you're just gonna, you will get more out of a, more work done on a 20 week project two quarter versus a 10 week one quarter. And any, any companies that are interested, whether it's nonprofit startup or corporate companies, we welcome all. We try to be as open-minded as possible. And simply what we do from that um, for his next step is if, if there's anybody that's interested in a project, we simply have them fill out a one-page scoping document. And on this scoping document, it, it essentially says uh, who the company is, what's the specific project overview or description that they want to, to do for a project or have students work on for a project, maybe some specific skill sets that are needed from the students, and then what time of year or program are you looking to get involved with? So there's quite a bit of flexibility. And then from there, uh, Professor Ziv and I have fairly streamlined um, what we call more of like a qualification type meeting, meaning if there is a specific project idea that a, a sponsoring or potential sponsoring entity might have or provide after they fill out the scoping form, we'd like to have a, a quick uh, phone call or meeting to briefly discuss what that is. And what we found is by taking the time to have that qualification meeting, we're able to set realistic expectations and tone set up front. And what we found is that in turn allows for just more um, consistency or better outcome or quality engagement once the programs start. And it, it's, uh, I, fair to, I would like to say it's, it's, it's fair to mention that um, these programs have been going on for a long time and Professor Ziv has a really great process and a lot of the other programs have been able to incorporate a lot of the same ideas. So we do have a fairly well well oiled machine in regards to the capstone programs with an ICS. Um, so I just wanted to mention that as a whole. And then really quickly to Goren's question, the 15 week capstone program is very unique in the sense that that's specifically data science focused. And most capstone programs say if they start in the winter quarter, they'll start in January and then run through, I believe, roughly the end of May, beginning of June, whereas data science starts, I believe, sometime in February, and then we'll go till um, roughly the end of spring or beginning of June. So hopefully that makes sense as far as the feedback. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jason. So perfect transition to Jessica, who will discuss the ICS Professional Master's Program. And Hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica Shanahan, and I am the program manager for the Master of Computer Science. It's one of the professional programs. Um, so I was given the opportunity to give you a quick overview or description of what professional programs are. Depending on when um, you alum have graduated, you may be familiar with what these are, um, possibly not. Um, but professional programs, we have a couple in the school currently. One is MCS, of course. The other one is the Master of Software Engineering. And the other one is Master of Human Computer Interaction Design. And our newest one, as Marius had mentioned, is the Master of Data Science. Um, so what are professional programs? The best way that I like to describe it really is um, to, to describe professional programs as um, our goal is to really prepare students to work in industry as opposed to really preparing them to go into perhaps academia. So unlike our traditional program, traditional master's programs, um, the MS programs that many of you are familiar with, um, our professional students um, don't necessarily participate or get involved in you know, research that the MS students get involved in. Um, the MS students typically um, have um, show a lot of interest in doing research or a sort of an investment toward research, possibly because they want to pursue a PhD in the future. My students and the other professional program, uh, professional students on the other hand, um, really are coming into our programs because they know that they want to work 
um, go into industry and continue their professional development. So our curriculum um, is, you know, very hands-on projects. We um, really focus on career development and professional development of our students. So one of the really great things about our professional programs is that we have um, staff members who are fully and solely dedicated to our professional students in terms of providing them a lot of, you know, guidance on their, you know, professional development journey. So, you know, that includes interviewing, workshops, help with their LinkedIn profile, help with um, interviewing, help with, um, you know, everything that you can think of in terms of what a career development counselor should be responsible for. Um, the other thing that's really great about our professional programs is that we really, really focus on developing those external relationships with, you know, corporate partners and with companies and, and other people who are interested in recruiting our students. Um, and on that note for um, in mentioning recruiting our students, later on here, I'm going to type in a link um, for all of you. It is a platform that is um, available to employers and recruiters who are interested in recruiting our professional students. So it's called 1220, we also name it code, um, but it's a platform that people and alumni can go into if they're specifically looking for MCS students, MSWE students, MDS students um, for different kinds of um, you know, opportunities, whether they be social networking or employment opportunities. Next slide, please. So here, this, this graph looks similar to the one that Jason had presented, but this one specifically just gives a comparison of what our traditional master's programs are, um, which you'll see in blue. And then on the right in pink, you'll see our um, professional programs. Um, and MDS is not on here because it is new, but I will remember to include it. Um, so those are our different, um, you know, master's programs within the School of ICS. Next slide. And lastly, I devoted a, um, a specific individual slide for MTS just to give them a shout out. Um, this is their new, um, this is our newest program and they are currently recruiting this fall. If you're interested in, in the Master of Data Science, um, there you will find the link and the um, email address to um, the program manager that currently runs that program. Does anybody have any questions for me or about the other professional um, programs? I think the only question I had is, can you tie in the uh, capstone and how that works with the, this program, these programs? Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you. Um, so our um, programs currently, our capstone um, projects are internal. Um, we've had multiple discussions about our hope and vision of including corporate partners, inviting them to, um, you know, give us projects so that, that students can start working with those companies. But currently for MCS, um, we're not at that point yet, but we are um, in talks about it. We have hopes about it. So perhaps don't be surprised if one day soon you might get an email with my name on it or perhaps Jason's name on it, um, soliciting and asking for um, some support on that. Um, and I think the same goes with MDS. Currently their plan is to um, have their capstone courses in-house and then perhaps launch it um, to the community um, at a later date. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jessica. Sure. Uh, the, these are just the contact information to contact mm -hmm. the various programs, right? Okay, so with that, we lead into the Department of Continuing Education and Julie can speak to that. Um, so there's certificate, certificate programs in technology and other programs like that. 
Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Julie Pei. I'm the Assistant Director of Technology Programs here at Continuing Education. Um, on the screen here, I've just put some contact information for myself and my colleague, Amy Kim, who runs several of the pro programs um, that we're going to see in, in the next slide. So um, at Continuing Education, um, we focus on um, young professionals or people who might be already in industry or that might be looking to transition into a different profession. Um, all of our courses are, are mainly, well, all of our courses are certificate courses and um, we do focus on uh, shorter programs and being that gap or that bridge, bridging that gap between um, people who may not have an ICS background or may have a background in specifically a subtopic within ICS and wanna make that transition into something else. Um, these are our technology programs and courses that we have available, but we do also have a robust portfolio in business, management, HR, law and finance, life sciences, and engineering. So these are mainly courses that focus on, at the professional level. We do have several students who come to us um, who have either graduated from UCI um, and maybe have been working in industry for a few years and are looking to brush up their skills and maybe transition into something else like, um, for example, agile project management um, is a really big topic right now that several of our students are reaching out to us for training. We also do have corporate partners that um, hire us to come in and um, train their, their staff in either soft skills or technology skills. So if you'll go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So um, for everyone who is a member of the Alumni Association, they do receive 10% discount off of all of our courses here at UCI Continuing Education. You can actually get that code by contacting the Alumni Association or your, um, your coordinator directly, um, and they'll provide that code for you. We also have reduced um, fees for UCI faculty and staff, and there's a link to that form as well. Um, and for more information on any discounts, because we do have other discounts running um, with our professional partners, you can go to that link there um, and uh, contact us and let us know if you're interested in any of these courses. So go to the next slide, please. I have been asked frequently um, from UCI alumni who are subject matter experts in their field. Uh, if there are lecture opportunities or instructor opportunities with us, and there definitely are, our process is very similar to the UCI campus process, and um, it's through the Recruit app here at UCI or the Recruit website. Uh, we are currently recruiting specifically for cybersecurity instructors, for web development instructors, and for software development instructors for some of our programming courses here. Um, we also have other opportunities um, for advisory committee members, several ICF, ICS instructors, professors, um, and staff do sit on our advisory committee boards. And basically what that is, is we do have meetings about twice a year to review all of the curriculum to make sure that we're in line with industry as well as um, with ICS on campus. Everything that we do is reviewed by campus. And so we just wanna make sure that we're aligned with the direction that ICS is heading in terms of our technology courses. We also have panel opportunities for webinars, um, similar events like this to highlight our courses and to highlight what we're doing at CCC. That's pretty much all I wanted to present today. Um, uh, and thank you so much for allowing me to, to come and represent UCI DCE. If you have any questions, um, my information is available on that uh, second slide. And um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Julie. That was great information. My husband actually teaches at DCE, so. Yeah. Oh, it's nice to have yeah subject matter experts and uh, quite a few alumni have reached out to me so I think that's a great opportunity for uh, alumni to get re-engaged uh, at becoming instructors. 
Uh, one quick question, how much collaboration is there between DCE and the ICS office? Is that, uh, um, is that kind of through the advisory committee? It is usually through the advisory committee um, and our courses are approved directly um, through ICS. Actually, um, Gopi Manakshundaran is the person who approves all of our approvals, but I do know that he does uh, send all the approvals around to the appropriate staff and faculty to make sure that it's aligned in terms of um, all of the learning objectives and things like that. So we do keep in contact with several of the um, staff and faculty directly at ICS. Perfect. Thank you, Julie. Thank you. So now we move on to the uh, UCI Alumni um, Association. This will be a pretty jam-packed informative session. So Jeff, Without further ado, you want to take it away? Yeah, thank you, Pooja. Um, lots of slides, lots of information. I'll try to go expeditiously as we uh, probably don't have a lot of time. But thank you, Pooja, oh, for okay. inviting us. Um, and uh, thank you, Jamar, and the other leaders of the ICS alumni chapter. We're, we're thrilled with all of your energy and engagement. Uh, thank you, Dean Marios, for your extensive support of both the chapter and partnerships with uh, the Alumni Association. Uh, I'd also like to, uh, most of you know her, but I want to acknowledge and uh, introduce Wendy Day Brown, who's my colleague at the Alumni Association, the liaison with the ICS alumni chapter, and she does, she does wonderful work uh, on behalf of the university and the Alumni Association. So Wendy, feel free to add in anything I miss in our presentation here. Uh, I'm proud to be here as an as a UCI alumnus who is an ICS minor myself. Uh, so uh, I studied in the same halls. Um, the first thing that we have here um, is just a, 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 a lot of resources that we have available. Uh, I'm going to be talking about resources available, uh, hopefully specific to, to you as ICS alumni, but resources to collaborate, resources to build networking opportunities, career support, and more. So this, uh, these are all listed on our website, but we have uh, different career resources for exploration and learning, networking and connecting, and then jobs and development. Some of these are partnerships uh, with other campus units. You already heard from, uh, from DCE, you're going to hear from the Division of Career Pathways, both of whom we collaborate with kind of have, uh, we triangulate career services for our students, our alumni, and our continuing education students. So uh, we're fortunate to, uh, to have these uh, offerings. I'm gonna go into much more detail on a few though. So uh, next slide, please. Uh, this one in particular, uh, this is the home of what we call the Anteater Network. This is the homepage. The Anteater Network is, uh, is a really uh, successful, great service that we provide to campus, the entire UCI community. It's not just for alumni, this is for anyone who identifies as an anteater. It is uh, open to students, alumni, parents of students, faculty, staff, and friends slash donors. So anyone who identifies as an anteater who wants to help each other out, this is for you. What its primary mission is, is to connect individual mentees with mentors for uh, light touch networking. This is all done virtually on this website, um, the Anteater Network, AntNet for short. Uh, this is what it looks like. There are a number of features beyond mentorship that this platform includes. Uh, so next slide, we'll get in a little more into the weeds. We launched this platform about a year and a half ago to great success, as you can see, our user base has grown considerably. We're over 7,500 anteaters on this platform in a very short amount of time. We didn't expect to be half this, uh, half, uh, to have half as much progress as we do now. Uh, the primary audiences, as we had hoped and as we expected, are students and alumni. So if you're an ICS student, uh, you can go on to this platform and you will see uh, dozens, if not hundreds of ICS alumni who have already raised their hands and signed up as mentors. You can connect with them very, very easily. We designed this whole thing to be easy to use uh, for all users and 
easy to make a significant impact for the mentors out there, alumni who wanna give back via mentorship. Next slide, please. We're all over the world. Uh, we have anteaters, of course, concentrated in California, Southern California, and then the Bay Area, but anteaters on six continents uh, on this platform uh, and uh, growing and growing our user base. Next slide, please. One feature that is gonna be of particular interest to you, um, we just launched a group specifically for ICS anteaters. Um, this group will be developed over the coming weeks and months and years, I hope. Uh, this group is kind of a, a, a subgroup, a home within the anteater network for ICS anteaters, whether you're students, alumni, or any of the other groups I mentioned before. Uh, the group is going to be a microcosm of the, the larger anteater network for you. So it'll be a, a special home for ICS anteaters. There are resources specific to your group. Uh, you'll be able to uh, facilitate connections and members within the group. Uh, push your own uh, content that you want to push, whether you're promoting events, promoting uh, capstone projects, promoting uh, industry showcase, all those kind of things you can do to the uh, ICS audience within this group as it grows. Uh, the next slide shows a, an example. Um, Paul Mirage School of Business Group is a little bit further along, so they have their own membership. They have their own resources that they've posted. So yours will look like this and potentially bigger down the road. I should also mention that the Anteater Network is quite sophisticated when it comes to uh, matching and pairing. If you join as a mentee, uh, it will suggest mentors for you based on your area of study, of course, connecting ICS folks with each other, your industry, uh, student activities you participated in, whether you're first generation, if you were uh, a student athlete, for example, if you're LGBTQ, uh, LGBTQ+, uh, if you're a veteran, if you participated in one of 600 plus student organizations we have, perhaps um, ICS Student Council uh, or more. So lots of different ways to connect in a, in a real smart way. You can search all those filters and then the platform will suggest it for you. Again, the key is mentorship. Now, a new feature we recently added on the next slide is a job board. So this is the new alumni job board for UCI and it is built within AntNet. This job board uh, allows alumni to post jobs and allows all users to find jobs and apply for jobs. Uh, if you have a job within your company or if you notice a job in an industry uh, or something you wanna refer to UCI alumni, you post it here. Um, as I said, the, uh, the user base for AntNet is 7,500 and growing. We're go going to get into the tens of thousands soon. And this platform uh, we've invested quite a bit of time in and it's been so successful. We've already re-upped our contract. We, we see a very long roadmap for this platform and we're gonna be rolling out features, uh, potentially including an app interface uh, down the road as our uh, vendor uh, moves forward. This job board is also a partnership with the Division of Career Pathways. You're gonna hear about from them next, I believe, uh, with the Handshake platform has an automatic feed into this job board. So employers who are posting jobs in UCI's main job board, which is Handshake, if there's a job that is applicable to alumni uh, with a certain uh, requirement of experience in industry, it will show up here automatically, the most recent 200 or so. So that is uh, thanks to our partnership there, uh, sophisticated. Now, some other programs, I'll, I'll highlight a few on the next slides. We uh, do a, a uh, yes, Pujo. Validate um, people on AntNet? Is there a validation process in the back end? There is. Every individual is looked up um, in our uh, UCI student alumni constituent databases. So everyone is identified as a member of the Anteater community. Um, again, that that's, it's a broad, uh, envelopment of the UCI community, but there has to be a uh, significant tie to the community. Like I said, student, alumni, faculty, staff, parent, or donor. Okay, 
Um, we do a ton of virtual programming at the Alumni Association. We're doing on average four, maybe four or so five virtual events a week, excuse me, a week, not e-week, engineering week. Uh, and we profile a lot of alumni. We have career speaker panels. We partner with faculty, the Anteater Wellness Wednesdays. Uh, Pooja mentioned that she, uh, Pyle and Pavan, uh, the esteemed Lohia family are gonna be doing one of these events coming up uh, very soon. We have career webinars uh, and, and many more. So uh, career speaker events, we really get into the, the careers of a lot of fascinating alumni. We put those out there. Um, I should say all, everything we do, all of these programs are free, uh, virtual programs, much like this Lunch and Learn. And then the Anteater Network is of course, completely free. It's a service to the entire community of UCI. It is paid for um, and sponsored by the Alumni Association, but it is not just us. This is for anyone and everyone at UCI, which is why um, ICS has its own group and many other schools and units do. Okay, benefits for recent graduates, a new um, uh, gift really from the Division of Career Pathways. Once you graduate uh, from UCI, you have 12 months of free access to Handshake, which lets you attend career fairs and access the Handshake job postings for 12 months. So as soon as you graduate, you're not hitting a paywall and you're not kicked off from career benefits. Uh, my second to last slide, uh, I mentioned career webinars. I'll just skim through this. We do all kinds of topics. You probably can't even see all these topics we've done in the last year and a half, but we do this in partnership with other UC campuses. So we often have panels uh, with our alumni mixed in with alumni from UCLA, UC Santa Cruz, et cetera. And we've had phenomenal turnouts to these events. They're all recorded and most of our webinars are, our other webinars are recorded as perpetual resources logged on our website. Final slide. Uh, we also have, you've heard of student career fairs. You've heard of uh, obviously your industry showcase, but we have alumni career fairs. Uh, this we also do in partnership across the UC system. We actually have one coming up on November 19th virtually. Uh, so for alumni out there seeking jobs, we, uh, we go out there and find employers who are not just looking for interns, entry-level jobs, but, uh, but those who are looking to hire those with more experience. Uh, so that's particularly popular with young alumni. Uh, that's it for me. Uh, lots of resources. Uh, we want to engage the alumni community while we support the student community. And of course, uh, you, the ICS alumni chapter is doing a phenomenal job. Uh, playing your role here, but all these resources, just wanted to make sure you know about them. They're here for you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. That was very informative. Lots of resources. Um, yeah, as starting the chapter, I was like, there's a plethora of uh, information and resources. And so how do you get access? Uh, for the sake of time, we wanted to go straight into the Career Center, um, UCI Division of Career Pathways, and then we can open it up for Q&A. So Dakota, take it away. Absolutely. Well, hello, everyone. I'm Dakota Serafin. I am a career educator with the Division of Career Pathways. Jeff did an awesome job kind of going over a lot of our partnership opportunities. I'm going to talk specifically about how you as alumni can post jobs and internships directly to our Handshake platform. So Handshake, as Jeff mentioned, is where we post all jobs and internship opportunities. Um, it's fairly straightforward. We try to make it as easy as possible for you all to upload your opportunities for our current students and fellow alumni. Um, so you will just have to set up a, a free account through the uci.joinhandshake.com. It's fairly quick to set up an employer account, but there is a level of verification that our staff goes through just to make sure that it's a legitimate opportunity with a legitimate organization. Um, we've created step-by-step -step instructions on our website that you'll be able to download and utilize as you go through this process. Uh, next step, or next slide, please. Perfect. So once you go to the UCI Handshake website, you'll see that you have a variety of options when it comes to creating your account. So you'll follow the link for the employer account, and that will take you through that series of steps and things to uh, get your account created and verified. And then once it's verified, on the next slide, you'll see the um, instructions on how to go through and post a position. So you'll want to fill out 
all of the four tabs with as much relevant information as you possibly can. You want to do the basics about your company, um, your different opportunities, you know, try to be as detailed as possible. Our students really enjoy learning as much as they can from these job opportunities. Um, make sure to select UC Irvine to post it there. Handshake as a whole is open to several universities, but if you want it specific to UCI students and alumni, you need to select the UC Irvine. Then you're able to hit save in the bottom right corner and it'll post to the campuses that you've selected. Typically it takes a couple hours, maybe a day max to get reviewed by our DCP team. And once it's approved, we will let you know. And I think that's it for me. Perfect. Thank you so much, Dakota. So we'll open it up to Q&A. I just wanted to thank everybody um, cross-functionally across UCI for joining. I know it's been a crazy year of 2020 uh, and a pretty crazy month. So we really wanted to get all this information out and we will continue to do first Friday's Lunch and Learns to look out for a December uh, invitation coming out where we'll talk about Android uh, platform. Uh, I'll, sh I'll just bring up the Halloween dress up pictures again. So please participate, please like, share, subscribe. I sound like a YouTube channel right now, but we want to get our membership up and you know keep the fun going virtually. So look out for the ugly sweater contest coming up for December and other um, game events to help socialize like game night and a scavenger hunt. Uh, again, check out our website, uh, icsanteaters.org where you can just find all these links and links to all the other organizations. We will also upload the PowerPoint there. One second. So again, these are the fun um, uh, submissions we had, data miners, bug and QA tester, media server. So please participate. I think it's fun, um, even though it's virtual. And I'll just open up for a Q&A. Um, Kristen, I think you had a question about the alumni fair. Um, oh, I was just asking if we can help promote just with an, an email from just ICS to our alumni um, about the career fair for the alumni. It's, it's, it's actually a very big deal. There's so many alumni who are unemployed and right. um, just graduated and, don't, and they don't have jobs yet. And, a very stressful time or whatever and uh, people are losing their jobs so we want to help support um, you know the alumni association and any type of fairs they have for our alumni it's absolutely 100 percent important so and this has been something that i've felt the alumni have come to me about for years on end and it's i'm usually having to connect them with oh well this person works at this company, so maybe you should connect with them. Let me introduce you. And I've had, you know, there's been some successes there. A lot of times, even at our alumni events, is you know, getting people to meet each other, and opportunities have um, come into fruition. But I think something like this is is really important. So I just want to be able to have our school help in our own way, um, you know, alongside the alumni association. So. For sure. And I think Chen yeah. had a question related to this. Um, I remember when I was an undergrad, ICS had its own um, jobs and career um, job board. But Kristen, um, as you mentioned, um, it's now all part of just Division of Career Pathways, correct? Correct. Yes. We don't have, it was ICS.jobs. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure that you helped with a lot of that, Pooja, at the time. <laughs> but no, it, it does not exist anymore. So, uh, uh, it was it was a great service and um, and now we've partnered so um, yeah I think it makes sense to centralize because uh, Chang had asked any plan to expand the ICS recruiting program to undergrads Mirage Career Center covers both undergrads and MBA so I'm assuming Mirage has its own career center that's separate from Pathways I don't know who can speak to that yeah I'm not quite sure on that one that I, is correct I'm, okay. Who was that, uh, Dakota? Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Is Mirage the only school that has its own career center? 
It is not. Uh, several other schools have their own career centers, but Mirage is one that has them for undergrad and grad. Oh, and, but ICS will all be run through career pathways. Yes. Perfect. I believe that answers all the questions, Jamar. I, I don't know if I missed anything. I, I think that I think that does handle it. Um, not not a question for myself, but just a, a comment. And so I thank everyone, all the all the presenters. I mean, is, there's just so many resources, and I'm really excited to kind of dig into it. Actually, a little, a little overwhelmed to dig into it, but it, it just seems like there's just a lot out there. Um, I know as uh, as a as a chapter leader. Um, one thing that I just want to make sure that and we don't need to necess necessarily answer it right now, but just what's how can the chapter help get the word out? I know this is probably a good example of that, but um, just let us know if there's and 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 actually for the for the community members as well for those of you listening and, and those of you that will be watching this later, um, please please reach out to us. And I know like the the whole job that that job. Um, you know, just everyone being affected, that that sort of hits, you know, I know that hits home for a lot of people. So please let us know if there's anything that we can do to help um, connect, get you the, whatever information you need to help, you know, um, make your situation better. So um, just more of a general comment. I did have one question. Um, thanks, Jamar. Um, one question for the continuing education. I think there's a number of certificate programs offered through continuing education, specifically computer science. And I was looking at, um, for instance, like the blockchain is interesting to me. And I noticed that none of the classes are really scheduled. It kind of says um, to be scheduled kind of for the coming year. So I just wanted to ask, is that something, um, are there plans to get those classes on the books or is it something you just kind of keep checking back when those programs um, might be available or I think maybe the continuing education person dropped off, but I'll, I'll shoot her an email. Yeah, perfect. Okay. I think uh, it looks like Jason had a had a point. Um, Regarding regarding capstones and, and costs, Jason, are you? Yes. So, yeah. um, actually, two quick points. Um, since I know we're at the almost the time limit, one, um, as a heads up, regarding the capstone programs, the next cohorts will start in January, and we typically start looking to connect and fulfill those projects at least a couple months out. So, so starting right now, because as an example, say if we need fifty projects for January, it takes a while to fill out. 50 potential projects with 50, 50 different entities. So it's always best to reach out to us earlier rather than later if there is potential interest. So that way we can have things teed up before the start of the academic winter quarter that starts at the beginning of January. Uh, that was the first um, item. And the second item was, I just wanted to reiterate regarding the capstone programs. Um, because we're an academic institution, we don't charge a fee for capstones. Um, that's not our focus. Uh, for corporate companies who ask for a monetary gift, it is not required, but is, is, is an ask. However, to clarify for nonprofits and startups, we don't ask for a monetary gift, meaning there's a lot of alumni that have actually reached out to us within the last six months. So if you're working for a small company, a startup, whatever it might be, and you simply need um, manpower, or in this case, student power, capstone programs are a really great place to start and connect with students not only to have them help you with a project but also the other component and Jeff mentioned this was the mentorship piece meaning it is more of an informal uh, way that alumni or you as an alumnus could connect uh, with students within a cohort of say three to five students um, so just as a heads up I wanted to clarify on that perfect thank you so much Jason so again, thank you to all our presenters. This was very informative. There's a lot of resources, many of which are free, if not almost all, to alumni and current students. Again, thank you. Um, happy Friday and happy uh, fall also. So video and presentation will be available to registrants and um, available to forward. So looking forward to see you guys in December. Thank, thank you. you so much.
Thanks, everyone. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.